Welcome guys, you joined me for another one of my uh, vlogs. Now I'm not sand dust, now this is the start of my spring campaign and I'm at an absolute stunning lake down in Kent. I can't name the lake, because it's in the rules that you're not allowed to name it. So I can't tell you that, all I can tell you is it's in the county of Kent. Look at it out there, beautiful. Absolutely lovely. And I'm the only one on here. It's the 20th of <clears throat> March and I've got a couple of nights. A couple of nights, I've got a work party on the uh, on the morning this, of the 2nd. So I'll pack up early and get into that. But let me just tell you a little bit about the lake. It's about 15 acres, I reckon, something like that. Probably, maybe about, between, not really too sure, probably 60 to 80 fish in here. All stunners, you know, probably probably 550s in here at the right time of year as well. Three of them could be commons. So there's a lot to go for, that's for certain. This is where I'm going to be doing my spring campaign, on here. Good thing about this lake, it's really run really well. So it's a limited amount of time you can do. So it tops, stops all the time bandits. Uh, and you can't come back after you've done a couple of days for, I think it's six days and you can't do more than four days in a two week period, something like that. But the rules are really good because it gives everyone a chance. You know, it's never mega busy down here. You always get a swim, you always try and get on fish. And the fish in here are stunning. You know, they really are beautiful fish and some big ones as well. So that's a little bit about the lake. As I say, I'm going to be doing my spring sort of, um, my spring vlogs down here when I can get down here because I work, spring's the busiest time for me. But yeah, I had a good look around this morning. Didn't see anything at all, it just looks good though, it just looks really, really nice. It's not been anything out this year so far. As I say, we're about the, I think it's the 20th of March, been nothing out, but normally they, it does, a, it starts to do a few fish in April. I'm about 10 days early and I'm the only one here you know there's no one else here which is uh, brilliant there's been people down the last two or three weeks and they've seen a couple of fish showing so they're on the move and I took the water t temperature today and I know it's in the edge so it gives you a rough idea but it's 13 degrees it's 13 degrees that's madness isn't it you know it's really crazy 13 degrees that's like anything over 10 and to me is like the fish start to get active so I thought I'd get down because I've got a work pie, I'll get down anyway because I can't get back here for about three weeks because of work so I thought get down why not you know the spring tickets started 15th of March so I thought I'd uh, get down no carp dog look no carp dog unfortunately as you're um, you're not allowed dogs on here so I'm a lucky carp dog charm. I'm afraid he's not with us and he won't be all spring. But I'm going to concentrate on here. I'll tell you why I've come in this swim. It's got a, I think last year, the first few fish came out from the middle area. I'm fishing out about 100 yards, loads of bars all the way out there till you get to about 90 yards. So I'm fishing all three rods, just the back of those bars out there in a, in a hard spot. I've, what I've done is I've, I've put a couple of rods on our spots and one on the silk in the gully to cover both aspects. Plenty of black chickens out there though, that's the only thing, they're bloody mental out there, rife with them. I've been um, getting the odd bleep where they're picking it up, but it doesn't really bother me because I know they're straightening out. I know first of all that me hook baits are uh, presented right for them to pick it up. They've picked it up and they're straightening it out. And where they're critically balanced, they're gonna float down back onto, back onto anything, so I know they're fishing effectively. In the spring, I like to I like to fish singles and maybe ping a few baits out. I don't use a lot of bait in the spring. I don't use a lot of bait anyway, really. I want to catch them, not feed them. So I've got three pop-ups out there, three System X washed out pop-ups out there. I've got two white and one pink. Uh, these are mega buoyant on the old, and they smell lovely, nutty. Uh, and they're mega buoyant on the old um, multi-rig out there, which I've done well on here before. If you remember, this is the lake that I did a couple of vlogs on last summer. If you go back, I'll put them up here or up here. You can go and look at one of them and it'll give you a bit more 
um, it give you a bit more insight into the lake and some of the fish I caught as well. I caught some, uh, I, I mean, I was lucky to catch three last summer. Uh, biggest was 34, beautiful fish, really individual fish, and two others as well. So hopefully the spring I can, um, all I want to do is just catch one. You know, if it's a 50 pound common, happy days, isn't it? Um, so I've pinged those three hawk baits out there. I've put about 10 baits in the same sort of area, but the ducks, the black chickens have cleared me out already, you know, since it's afternoon. Black chickens are on it. They're, uh, you know, they're ravenous after the winter. Anything out there that looks like a bait, they're on it. You know, cleared me out. Beep, beep, beep. Love it, eh? So it's now before dark. I may move, if I see one tomorrow, I may move from here last night. Well, I will move if I, if I see him, if I don't have anything here. But there you go, it's been a beautiful day. Uh, oh, that's what I was gonna show you. Have a look in there. There's a little corner in there where the sun gets into. So I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Maybe, um, maybe ping a, a bait out there if I see some bubbling or see anything. You know, you've got to keep your options open all time of year, but I'm always looking, always looking, just to see what, when anything shows. And you know, that's half the, half the battle is finding the fish, location. So important, location is key. Gives you confidence, doesn't it? And confidence is, like I say, is 99.9% .9 of how you catch. All those little percentage points, point, one of percentage point rigs, bait, you know, it means nothing unless you've got your location right and you're on fish. So there you go, guys. We're, um, you know, this is the first of my spring vlogs. Hope you're gonna enjoy it. And what I'll do is, I'll see you in the morning. We we'll have another little look, re-evaluation of what I'm doing. If I'm going to move, or if I've got one to show you from the night, and uh, we'll catch up then. See you soon. It's just after the first light. Always get up. If there's one sort of tip that I could give you, which would definitely put more fish on the bank for you, that's in the spring and the summer, even the winter as well, is to get up at first light. Or just before, I was up for quarter, quarter to six, it was just getting light. I make myself a nice cup of nice cup of tea or coffee, whatever you whatever you fancy and um, just sit up on a bed chair or have a look round or if you're arriving at a lake try and get there just before first light especially in the spring and the summer because that's when they show that's when they give their presence away and it gives you a, a chance of plotting up on top of them <clears throat> so i'm just looking out now just uh having a nice cup of tea just see if i can see any shows and if i see any shows i'm gonna i'll probably move on to them today Got a bit of rain coming about th two, three o'clock, so it'll have to be in the next three or four hours. But this is the time, if you'll see them, if they're active, this is when you're gonna see them. Let's have a quick look at it. Put my tea down, let's have a quick look at it there. A little bit of a southwesterly blowing. Nice light southwesterly. Had a bit of rain last night. Not a lot, just a little bit. It's looking mighty fine out there, I must say. I'm really expecting to see one show somewhere, you know. Really expecting to see one show somewhere. But um, quiet night, no bleeps, no black chickens picking me up, thank God. But then again, like I said, it, it doesn't really bother me. I've got my baits, you know, I've got tied my pop-ups on. One of them I've got meshed up. Well, seen the most duck activity, and they've all been picked up and dropped on back on the spot. So I know they're all fishing. In fact, sometimes it helps you. Sometimes it helps you to um, have them picked up, straightens out your link. And with those multi rigs, they reset themselves. They slowly come down again, and they reset themselves nicely. So you're always fishing. So. It's, um, I'm going to keep on looking, see if I might have a move. 
is looking good out there though. I'm surprised there's nobody else here. There's nobody, it's the first beginning of the season really. Uh, I mean, I was speaking to the owner yesterday, come around to see me, and there was no one here a weekend. You know, Saturday and Sunday, it's Monday morning now. Saturday and Sunday, no one here. First weekend of the season, loads of big fish in here. And there's no one else here, it's great. That's the beauty of having the time limits and everything else, and only a certain amount of <coughs> nights you can do in your, um, in your on your spring ticket. It makes it um, makes it fair for everybody. You know, I think a lot of people will be saving up their nights for when it picks up, when the fish start coming out, which is normally about April, normally about another ten days to two weeks over here. So I've, what happened last year, they start to uh, come out. But that's why I thought I'd get over here a little bit earlier, check it out, plumb a few swims, and um, give it a go. So I'll catch up with you soon, guys, and um, see what happens. I've been looking and looking and looking all day. Not seen a dicky bird. Plenty of black chickens out there. Been looking all over the lake, not seen a fish show or anything. I mean, if I had, I probably would have moved on to it. I would have been up stick straight away, bang and round there, you know, but I haven't seen anything to act upon. So we're about an hour before dark. I mean, if I see something now, I'll be up sticks and I'll be round there to be able to ping out, you know, ping out three singles. But I've seen the fish show. So we, um, we're going to be last night, off in the morning, but you never know, dear. You? you never know. This has been a bit of a recce trip for me for the rest of the spring. Just uh, I thought I'd get in early before everyone else. I mean, still no one else has turned up. It's crazy, isn't it? A lake with this many big ones in it. Some lovely fish. It's um, no one's turned up. But I think they're saving their nights for when it starts fishing a bit more. But I just thought I'd get ahead of the game. Um, Suss out this swim as well, where the spots are, you know, where the trench is out there and that. So that's in my notebook ready for when I come back next time. It's just starting to rain now. You might get a few spots on the old lens. But um, something I want to share, share with you as well is um, I'm fishing mono at the moment and I fish about 100 yards out. And if you look at my rig, um, not my rigs, my bobbins, you'll see that I'm fishing tightly clipped up. Tightly clipped up. Um, the reason for that is that anything over about 30, 40 yards, or anything under about 30, 40 yards, I like to fish slackish lines. But anything over about 40, 50 yards, I like to fish semi-slack, and then where I'm fishing 100 yards out, tight lines. Even with um, even with that little bit of stretch, I've got to fish them tight out there. Um, I haven't recast the rods, I've left them out there. Sometimes I've found that if you leave them out there, and don't disturb the area out there, and the ducks are doing, going about their business and picking your baits up and dropping them, that sometimes you get a, you get a take where you haven't disturbed it. I mean, the fish are just waking up now, and they're probably, and a little mooch about, and uh, any disturbance will maybe put them off. So I'm leaving those out there for the night, since I cast them yesterday. So look, the bloody chickens are still out there, look. Look, don't even see them out there but they're out there in full force, a marder of them. Bloody, been loads of them out there today. Absolutely loads of them. So, also, I'm not gonna put the radio on tonight. Normally I like to listen to the radio, but I'm just gonna listen out to see if I, if I hear anything. I mean, if in the, even if it's 10 o'clock at night, I'll have a move, I will move. But you've got to take advantage of these situations. Every minute matters. And, um, you know, time spent in the right, area if you hear them or see them during the day or night or anything you've got to move on to them got to you know I've had quite a few fish doing that just moving in the middle of the night picking out three singles and you you reap the rule sometimes not every time but you know you just feel like you're fishing you feel like you're alive you're in touch with the place so I've been looking hard all day but haven't seen anything to go on so um, I'll probably see you in the morning uh, when I'm packing up and see what we've sort of learned from this this session um, or hopefully we might have a bite in the night or I might have moved you might I might 
you might come back to me in the morning, I'll be in a totally different swim, you never know. That's the um, that's the way I feel at the moment. I feel like if I see anything, I'm on it straight away. I'm gonna to have to move. So I'll see you, I'll see you in the morning, guys. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm videoing this on my phone. Because <coughs> I was up early this morning, up past five to our first light. Looking, um, looking as I do. And uh, I see a fish show out in front of here. So I've just reeled in all three rods. It's got a box of me three rods and a net. There's, look, there's me, uh, there's me rods out there. Well, that's me all packed up, nothing's happened. I've just reeled in the rods. Didn't see another fish after I put the um, bait out. Schoolboy already, I should just put one rod out, cast it past it, dragged it back onto the fish. Just let it settle itself. Said I'd just cast all three rods out in the area they, they were fizzing. So, uh, messed up. So that's me, I'm all packed up, all ready to go home. The old van, the old van's packed up and I'm gonna head off to McDonald's, nice little pit stop. And that's my first session of the spring on my new lake. And what have I learned? Well, that's what I learned. I shouldn't have cast straight on top of them. Should have only used one rod. And they haven't woken up. I haven't woken up yet here, and they're scared of leads. It's always something worth um, thinking about. There's no weed in here at the moment, so any sort of lead going in the water, I'm pretty sure they know what it is, and they're skedaddling off. So, back in about three weeks' time. See what happens, a new adventure. If you like my vlogs and my reviews and everything else, please press the uh, subscribe button down there. Put your comments, give me some ideas for for some reviews and that and um, I'll see you on the next um, on the next video thanks for watching guys